Hey there, this is Angela with Parker's Permaculture. I had a special package arrive in the mail today when I got home from my walk and I wanted to open it with y'all. So I splurged a little bit and I ordered some rare tree collared cuttings of varieties that I don't already have from Project Tree Collared. And they came from um, Berkeley, I believe. Yep, in Berkeley, California. Um, they came to me in Portland, Oregon in just a few days. And you might not, depending on where you live, want to be getting cuttings in the mail in the middle of winter. But for me, because it's so mild here, there wasn't a risk of them freezing or being damaged. It's actually kind of the perfect time of year to ship cuttings. So let me open them for you and then show you what I do to prep the cuttings. And then at the end of this video, I will link to my video on how to root tree collared cuttings. So you can check that out if you want to get cuttings yourself. So let me open up this box here. I'm super excited. Project Tree Collard has a lot of varieties of collards that I can't find locally. Actually, locally, I've only been able to find um, two types of tree collards. Uh, the purple tree collard and then green tree collard. So they aren't even named varieties. I'm not sure what they are. Um, let's look here. So the tree collards come like this with cornstarch packing and directions. And then here's my merit tree collards. These are supposed to be really tasty and have big lush leaves. So I'm excited to try and start these. Then I got some regular purple tree collards because they were really inexpensive to get three cuttings. And I wanna see if they're different than the purple tree collards that I already have. And then this one I'm really excited about. These are dinosaur tree collards. So if you look at the foliage, it's reminiscent of dinosaur kale, um, and I'm excited to get a perennial form of that. So I'm gonna um, get all of these guys going. I'm really, really excited. So let's see what the letter is from the shipper. Thank you for your order. I'm honored to share these with you. I added an extra merit tree collared seeds. Well, that's really nice. So tree collars can be notoriously difficult to start from seed, but I'm going to give them a go. And that's really a nice little extra added bonus. And inside are directions for how to start tree collared seeds. So I will read those over carefully because they can have a lower germination rate than kind of some of the other brassicas. And then here are my directions for starting the tree collards themselves. And I've rooted tree collard cuttings a lot. So again, I'll link to my video on how to root tree collar cuttings at the end of this, but let me show you my technique. So this suggests the same thing um, that I do to some extent, but I add one extra step. And particularly because these took, you know, almost a week to get here in the mail, I have some little mugs with just some warm water in them. And I have three separate mugs because I want to keep the varieties separate. I'm going to keep the labels with them. So when you open up the package of tree collards, they're in a moist paper towel. They're still moist. You can see they're trying to leaf out. They're very blanched because they've been in the dark for almost a week. Now, um, whoo, they smell like brassicas. That is for sure. So sometimes the end can get a little bit desiccated on these. Okay, so just like when you bring home a fresh bouquet of flowers, you want to trim the ends or you bring your Christmas tree home and you want to cut the end off so that you have a fresh open wound basically on the bottom of the plant so that it can more easily suck up the water. You want to do the same thing here with your uh, tree collar. So you want to trim off just the end. And the reason that I'm taking just a tiny, tiny little sliver off of the end here is that these cuttings are actually large enough that I can split them in half and start two whole new plants off of them. But first I'm gonna put them in the warm water to soak and I'm gonna keep the label with it. And then I'm gonna do that with my other cuttings as well and I'm gonna let them soak all afternoon because they are a little bit desiccated and that way they can kind of plump back up and have a head start when I start to root them. Okay, so let's look at the merit tree collards now. Wow, you can see there's a substantial size difference between these and the purple tree collards. 
one of the things I had seen and read about these is that they are a shorter, more robust tree collard, but also I think they need a little bit warmer climate. So if you are not in as moderate of a climate zone, these might not be as hardy for you as some of the other tree collars, but the flavor is supposed to be quite good. I actually am gonna need to put them in here because I need a wider container. And then let me get the last ones out to show you. These are the dinosaur tree collards. And again, these you can see how blanched the leaves are because they've been in the dark for almost a week. So again, I'm just gonna cut the ends off and then I'm gonna stick them in the water. And I'm gonna put this sign with these guys and I'm gonna let them soak for the rest of the morning. So thanks for watching me um, open this package from Project Tree Collard. It was a little bit of a splurge for me to order, but we eat a lot of greens and I'm really trying to expand this year the number of perennial uh, vegetable crops that I'm growing. I also ordered some perennial broccoli and I ordered a new low sting variety of stinging nettle from um, Oikos Tree Crops, but they are not here yet. They ship later in the spring, probably like March or April. And so I'm hoping to get those rooted and going as well. I think it's really important to grow more of the low maintenance perennial vegetables if possible and incorporate more of those into our diet so that we have a diversity of foods and not just the same three kinds of kale and, um, you know, bok choy and Swiss chard of which we eat a lot, but I think it's good to have a, a greater diversity whenever possible. So thanks for watching. If you want to go ahead and click through to um, the video that I'm going to link here, which is the video that I made earlier this year on rooting tree collard cuttings. I'd like to give a word of warning. Make sure when you are putting out your young tree collards, they are not somewhere where your chickens are going to scratch and destroy them. They really need a little bit of time to establish a good root system. And if they are somewhere where chickens are free ranging, their scratching can damage and kill your young tree collards. So make sure they're in a protected area. Um, also, you want to make sure after you put out your rooted tree collards that they are protected when they are young from cabbage lope or butterflies. So like I said, go ahead and click through to the video on how to root tree collard cuttings. I'm going to let these guys soak and then later in the day I will come back and pot them out. And I will be sure to keep you updated on the progress of what they're like when they're growing and then what they taste like. I'm hoping to do a video later in the summer where I can make a salad or some stir fry and compare the different leaves and talk about the flavor profile as well as their disease and pest resistance and how they're doing in my garden. Um, Cause I think that's important. How they behave in Berkeley is maybe not how they behave up here in Oregon. Um, and I will be back soon. Thanks for watching.